Hello, everybody. Yo. It's Necron with Zod. What's up? And the Savage Bat. Yo, what's up? Another fucking Batman. <laughs> yeah, the motherfucking Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I wanted to do a little um fireside chat. I forgot to put my fire on. The first fucking fellow tonight. Anyway, about why have we not gotten a Bat Flick movie yet? And the reasons why we should get a bat flick movie and one of the first things i want to start off with is let's debunk some of the betas and antis talking about ben affleck and how they're you know they were saying well you know justice league was terrible for ben and he didn't want to do it after that and we all our circles know it's because it was the justice league's reshoots and ben was already in a bad place in his life yeah. it wasn't Justice League, and it wasn't the Batman character that made him want to step away. He was, um, obviously, they were ready to walk off the set on the reshoot, so we all know, you know, that was, um, things were not going well, and I think, to me, they were seeing that, hey, this ain't the movie we signed up to make. Yeah. I think, Ben, think? Actually, ben actually did walk off the set, and they had to come back, apparently. Yeah. And yeah, so, he, so did Jeremy Irons as well. Jeremy yeah. Irons was saying, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave right now." Yeah, he tried to. A uh, Ben Affleck tried to organize a walkout, a walkout. with Justice League, and, uh, and everyone said, and he, "Calm he down." Couldn't, he couldn't get nobody behind him, and that yeah. was the reason. Yeah, that and would have been was great, all... though. I kind of wish that that would have happened, honestly. To tell yeah. You <laughs> yeah, that would have probably been a nice thing if it did. But the, you know, the emphasize this was under Joss Whedon's reshoots, yeah. not had nothing to do with Zack Snyder because they try yeah. to spin it like you know if they don't I know what they're up to they'll they'll say you know during the Justice League Ben Affleck was unhappy and it's like nah that's not exactly true I know what you're trying to do you're trying to make it sound like it's um you know under Zack Snyder and it was under the Joss Josh Whedon shoe so yeah. that yeah, it's I, always convenient to leave out those little details I've oh noticed. yeah you can because you can take it completely out of context and say Ben Affleck will never be back for another Batman movie or will never do a solo Batman movie because he was unhappy while filming Justice League. And you could take that completely out of context not yep. knowing the details not realizing that like what you pointed out about it being him being unhappy under Joss Whedon, not Zack Snyder but they'll automatically paint that as he was just generally unhappy, unhappy during yeah. Justice League. So yeah. that will reflect on Snyder as well. And they'll basically give that L to Zack Snyder rather than look into it and say, oh, well, yeah, it was the Justice League reshoots that created this problem. Yeah, not to mention as well, Ben is very good friends with Zack Snyder. Yes. And Zack Snyder lost Autumn Snyder during the filming. So that was also another reason that it weren't good for Ben. Do you know what I mean? It was uh, it was uh, a tragedy, you know. And and how that I mean they still go with that even though Ben came by back and he and um did the um, the extra scene the nightmare um, reshoots the yeah. nightmare not, um not extended scene. extended uh, scenes we don't call them reshoots do we? <laughs> yes, yeah. The Zack Snyder um proper Ex ending of the movie. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. So to sit there and say that he doesn't want to do it is ridiculous. And then he also signed up for, you know, we won't get right, well, into the Well, flash. the fact that he's, in, yeah, well, I mean, and the fact that he's in the Flash shows, if anything, it just shows that he didn't want, he wanted to continue playing the character. If he didn't want to play the character of Batman. He wouldn't have done it. He, he wouldn't have done the Flash movie. They would have had somebody else in the suit. Or maybe yeah. they would have brought, maybe they would have brought Clooney back or brought back, uh, or maybe somehow figure out a way to sh uh, shoehorn Pattinson in it if they needed another Batman, if Affleck mm. wasn't willing to do it. But my thing is that, you know, he obviously loves the character, and he's been on record many times saying that he enjoyed playing the character of Batman, and, and he, he does get into details about, you know, you know the the crazy stuff that happened during Justice League. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. you know what, for me, when I look at this whole situation, one of these days in the not so distant future, we're going to get a documentary 
that is going to cover all of this. And you're going to get to hear from all the filmmakers and all the actors and all the people involved with the whole Justice League, Justice League debacle. And then you'll get the story from the horse's mouth because then you'll mm-hmm. get you'll get a you'll get a Ben Affleck who's in a different place, probably an old and gray Ben Affleck talking about it. This is probably something we won't hear about for we probably won't get a documentary like this for another 20, 25 years because enough time is going to have to have been passed. Yeah. There's going to be long after you know, long after the Snyderverse has concluded, long after you know DC will probably have been have been like rebooted like two or three times by the time this documentary comes out. But we'll eventually get that documentary. And that's what I'm waiting for. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Because I, I want to hear, like, which executives were, you know, the actual name them on camera, you know. Right, the right. You know, they'll be able to be, they'll be able, because some of those executives will be dead and gone. Yep. And the idea is you'll be able to actually mention what happened. I mean, heck, even, maybe even... Uh, Maybe even Joss Whedon will, will be available for that documentary, and they'll be able to get his take. I mean, my thing is at that point you're gonna you're gonna be able to hear everything, and that to me is more compelling. All this behind the scenes stuff is more compelling, hearing it from their perspectives and what they were going through than even the movies themselves. So to me, that that I think I think that's gonna be incredible. So that's what I, that's what I'm waiting for. Like we, I can't wait to get that. And just and you know. Just, you know, um, Josh Whedon, this is not an excuse for him to be how he behaved, but right. you know, his ass was on the firing line, too. You know, I'm sure they were breathing down his neck. My, my thing with Josh Whedon is he knew it was a crappy rush job that he had to do. And he was a high enough, he was in good enough standing during the filming of Justice League where he could have just said, I'll do your I'll do this Justice League movie for you, but you gotta let me do it my way. Uh I wanna reshoot it. I wanna do it in my I wanna do it in my I wanna have a new script writer. Basically, I would have told the studio, yeah, Dean Joss Whedon, I would have said, I want to start from scratch. I don't I don't wanna come in and try and the Frankenstein, Frankenstein yeah. somebody else's work and try to do another, especially, you know. With Zack Snyder having the director's credit and all that, I, yeah. I had heard something late. I had heard something early on, back in the day. I don't know, Savage Bad, if you might have heard this too, but I'd heard something early on that the reason why Zack Snyder kept his name on the movie was because in order for him to be able to eventually put out Zack Snyder's Justice League, he had to maintain director director's credit of the theatrical cut otherwise right. they would not have allowed him to put out there's like director's guild rules or something yeah he wouldn't yeah have, he wouldn't have been able to put out Zack snyder's justice league because he was no longer credited as if he was no longer credited as director of the for of the theatrical version but my thing is i, I i'm just saying from the perspective of joss whedon this is a guy who'd already directed two Avengers films by that time. He could have put his foot down at the studio and said, hey, look, if you want me to come in and do this, I'm not coming in and cleaning up someone's mess. I want to do my movie. I want to do Justice League my way. You let me do it my way or I'm not doing it. And they would have had to get somebody else. And I think if they would have had to get somebody else, they were in such you know, a crunch for time they would have just went with whatever Zack Snyder had left there. They wouldn't have. If J- I think if Joss Whedon would have said no, I don't think they would have had time to bring in somebody else. So in, in many ways, we have Joss Whedon to thank for us getting the Snyder cut. <laughs> yeah. Because I think because I think if if the if they weren't able to get Joss Whedon in there, they would have just cobbled together whatever studio cut. You know, Zach had showed whatever Zach had showed the studio before he left. They would have probably trimmed it down to be two hours to fit in movie theaters, mm-hmm. and they would have just released when, a subpar, yep. a subpar cut of whatever uh, whatever Zach had had given them, and that that would have been it. And I don't think it would have. But you know, and this whole Joss Whedon thing, where it was a patchwork, I, I I I'll just never understand 
why as a filmmaker, especially with, you know, pedigree projects to your name, like those two Avengers movies, that's some pretty big stuff. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you say, you know, Warner Brothers, let me do this right. I mean, he, pro he probably could have. And they might have looked at him and said, you know, he's probably right. Although I don't think they would have, because at that time, if you guys remember, it was about the it was outgoing, about bonuses. It was yeah, that. it was about the outgoing executives wanting their bonuses for the movie for that year. For so that they year, had yeah. to rush. So they had to rush it out, which is why I'm saying if Joss Whedon hadn't agreed to do it, they probably would have just, just wanna... went with what they had because there's no. I mean. <laughs> You know, you, you don't have time to keep screwing around with different directors and bringing different people in. So, you know, the whole concept of going from uh, a Justice League movie to a potential uh, Ben Affleck Batman movie would not have made sense. And Ben Affleck knew that his version of Batman wouldn't have fit in with anything that DC was doing at the time. Apparently... The script that he created for uh, his Batman movie, according to uh, Zack Snyder's storyboard artist Jay Oliva, Jay Oliva said that the that the that the script that Ben had had showed him was the best Batman script he'd ever read. So That's what I heard too. I don't. I don't Same, think I, you can't. You can't tell me that. The Ben Affleck Batman movie wouldn't do gangbusters in the cinema. We are at a point now where people want to see a good movie, and I would I would be willing to bet you any money that it is, it is head and shoulders above anything Matt Reeves is capable of. You know, and I was thinking it doesn't even need to have a super huge budget. No, no, no it just needs to be a yeah street uh, level would have been movie. The, yeah isn't, street isn't level Deathstroke fighting yeah. Was it Deathstroke? Deathstroke yeah. would have been the the main villain. Yeah, yeah it would have yeah. been Deathstroke. So, I mean, we didn't I need mean, this. Come on, you would have had you would have Ben Affleck, you would have Joe Maganello, and you would have had uh, Jared Leto as your yeah. main as your main actors, and you would have had Jeremy Irons in there as Alfred. Yeah, of but, course. Yeah. I mean, but come on, I mean, you're talking about a movie. They could have made a movie just sur surrounding those few characters. In the movie would have been fantastic. Can you imagine how good it would be? Yeah, yeah, because it would have been more psychological. It would have been mm -hmm. more. It would have been very. It would have been a lot more noir than what Matt Reeves was going for. Good I mean, I, I, when I, when I think about what they passed on in order for that Robert Pattinson movie to come out, I get even more pissed. It, well, because, it goes to show their ineptitude, you know, like. Why would yeah. you pass on this? Like, why would you what pass you on a on a on a yeah. script that is allegedly fantastic for something that's just mid at best? I mean, even people, and and this is what gets me about that movie. Even people that like it don't like it that much. They it's talk not their about favorite they Batman. talk about how great it is, but nah. then when you ask them, well, uh, it's coming, it's out on 4K. Are you going to watch it again? I'll probably buy the 4K, but I'm not really in any any hurry to watch it again. Well, why not? If it's such a great movie, yeah. you should be able to watch it any time. If but it's such a great movie, you, you want that 4K. You want that 4K. You want to watch day. it. I mean, I was when I got my when I got the beat when I got Batman v Superman, the 4K. I I ran that. I, I ran that. Must have watched that movie. 20 times within the first week of getting it. And it had a Zack Snyder commentary. Track. I know. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I'm telling you, these people are just, it's like, it's like, well, if it's that great of a movie, it's something you're going to watch over and over again. If you're not in a, if you don't really are not that excited about it, then it's really not that great of a movie. You need to face the fact that the reason why you go back to a movie and you love it and it's a favorite of yours is because of rewatchability. If a yeah. movie has no rewatchability, you can't say it's your favorite movie. And you cannot say that it's a masterpiece and you loved it and all that because if you can't watch it again in the near future, then you didn't love it and it's not that great of a movie. And I think these <coughs> people are, are going to need to start uh, eventually they're going to come to that realization 
that this Matt Reeves movie is not really all that great. That the only reason that they loved it so much was because of the hype and because mm-hmm. they're biased against <clears throat> Zack Snyder. That's the only reason why this movie was as hyped up as it was. This is why you had, you know, Little Caesars with the with the 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 oh, the, 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 the bat calzones. The bat, the bat calzones and all that. You had yeah. all that only because <sighs> They were doing everything that they could to hype this movie. I was you. I was seeing Robert Pattinson on, on socks and diapers and formula cans hey, and everything. <laughs> have you gone in the stores and all that merch looked like it did not sell? It's like in the clearance aisle. Yeah, all yeah it didn't sell at yeah. all. It didn't sell at all. And I'm going to tell you, it's not I'm a phenomenon. You, man. It's just not. It's nah, nothing that not anybody. So. It's nothing that anybody. At one. At some point. These people are going to need to come to the realization that the movie was mid. They need to accept that the only reason that they that they were as excited about it as they were is because they hate Zack Snyder, or it's it's not even real hate. It's more like I know man, it's, it's just it's like man, they're just hanging on to something. Yeah, it's manufactured just... hate. It's not real hate. They don't. They don't. It's like they, a bandwagon. They, they, they don't know any better. Yeah. Like a bandwagon hate, I completely agree. And, and what we're looking at now is a movie that is so mid that it's almost mediocre. I mean, because it's really not. When you think about this movie, visually, it's it's nice. It looks like a graphic novel visually, but it's not very well. Yeah. From a yeah, it's shot very well from a technical standpoint, but from a story perspective, I'm gonna be honest. I'd rather watch Batman and Robin. <laughs> from, from a story perspective because at least with batman and robin batman and robin doesn't su- doesn't pretend to be some sophisticated art house piece of cinema like this movie yeah. pretends to be I see what you're this saying. movie pretends to be pretends like it's something that it isn't and it's essentially it's essentially trash with nice window dressing that's really all it is it's like it's like it's a beautiful house on the inside and then you walk inside and all you see garbage bags and crap everywhere it's not it's it's that's exactly what it is it's a mess plot wise it doesn't really make sense the motivations for for batman don't really make sense the motivations for the riddler don't really make sense it's all kind of just jumbled up bad ideas thrown in an artsy type aesthetic and people look at it and say oh it's a great movie oh Oh, it's it. This is cinema. This is cinema. Yeah, cinema like, yeah. like, give me a break. It's not. It's yeah, like they thought, right. like, hey, you know what? This would just be a cool shot with Batman here, with the sun fading over here. You know? And fa- it looks I, nice. It I've looks seen nice. Fan films. Yeah. I've seen Batman fan films that are better than this than this Matt Reeves yeah, yeah. crap. Well, some of those Batman fan films are actually uh, they're, they're great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're pretty great. good. I'm not going to lie to you. They're yeah, fantastic. I was like, hey, that was yeah. kick ass. <laughs> you know? And that, that's yeah. why I, that's why I'm sitting here right now. Like, like it, it 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 boils my blood even more when I start to think about the whole concept of passing over Ben Affleck's masterpiece that's for a freaking home run right out of the park for man. this. Bam. For what for what we got now? If if now if if Matt Reeves made a made a masterpiece if it was if it was a great movie yeah, i'd be sitting i'd be sitting here eating crow and giving them all the credit mm-hmm. just like everybody else but these people are lying to themselves nobody cares about this movie it's not it's not there, nobody's talking about it anymore even nah. the people that defend it that have patents in, in their twitter handles aren't saying anything anymore because they no, know it's not that. good. Oh, we're not watching more about Ben Affleck, Batman, than Pat- Baddest yeah. to this yeah. day. On Facebook, yeah. people have, um, the ones that were going, oh, it's some magical masterpiece, you know, cinema and all that. Um, yeah, it's just complete silence now. It's just, uh, is is it a generation <laughs> gap thing? Is it because maybe they're just, that's what the younger crowd goes for? Or is it- I, I, I've thought about it. From a generational perspective, that's a great question because you got to remember we're dealing with a generation of buffoons that look at look at their look at their phones nonstop and even watch first run movies on their cell phone. Yeah, how, how I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, that's I got a terrible. I got a 4K 50 inch television. 
I don't want to watch a movie that is supposed to be, that is being barred as this is cinema on a cell phone. If you're going to sit there and you're going to watch all your movies digitally on a cell phone, you're missing out on the very, uh, on, on the very nature of what this film, what these films are meant to be. And I, and I just don't, and I think it is a generational thing and it's only going to get worse. We're going to get to a perspective where, you know, this is why TVs are so cheap now, because essentially what's happening is the newer generation doesn't really care about TVs. They're all about mobility. They're all about, I got my phone. I can just stream it from my phone and watch it. Uh, that's, this is why you I see cell phone providers that are, you know, have, have deals bundled with like Netflix and Hulu and all that. The reason why is because that's what this generation does. They consume their 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 content whether it's a first run movie or a tv show yeah. uh, via the, the via their their cell phone so is, it, just watching I, I a mean, movie like that is empty calories to me this is yeah you're I not getting no the desire. experience you're not i have no desire i have no desire to do that i have yeah. no desire to do that in fact i love and this is why i like i love and i've talked about this where i love virtual reality where i put the virtual reality headset on and you can simulate a movie theater experience where you're sitting in the movie theater. You're on your own couch, but you're sitting in a movie theater, and That's you got wild. the big and you got the big IMAX screen right in front of you, eighty inch IMAX, and you got your <laughs> and you're and you're just and it just looks beautiful. And you can and you're just like I watched I watched Zack Snyder's Justice League in virtual reality like that before. Wow. And it was fantastic yeah. on an IMAX screen and i had you know i had it plugged i had i was sitting i put the i put in uh, like a little um a little outlet next to me so that i could plug my headset in because you know zach snyder's justice league is a long movie and it and so it will drain your battery life trying to watch a movie oh, yeah. that's long on your headset so i just put it in a position where the headset wasn't pulling down on me so that i could watch the movie comfortably while it was charging and it was it was a master it was master wow. it was just like being in the movies and that's why I was I say, say, it was like you're almost there i couldn't imagine somebody you know just watching that i consume basically just consuming it on their phone like mcdonald's and i think that's the reason why marvel is so popular because you can turn your brain off and watch a marvel movie you can consume a Marvel movie like that, and you just go about your day. It's not making you think. It's not doing anything for you. And at the end of the day, I really don't think that this that this Batman movie that was released uh, is really all that sophisticated. Visually, it's nice, but it's other not than sophisticated. That, it's a day. It's just like a, a day in the life of Batman to me. It's a brooding. It's just just a brooding, walking it's around. Just a brooding Batman, you know. It's it's basically Kurt, it's Kurt, it's Kurt Cobain in a bat suit. That's all yeah. it is. And, and, and that's not making fun of it because that's what the director no, said. That, yeah, that's exactly what he said he wanted to do. <laughs> and, and I mean, and put I, I heard in that. It. I was like, I don't, I don't make that connection in my mind. Yeah, I don't, Batman. I don't make that connection. No. Like, I I feel like Matt Reeves would have been better off creating his own vigilante batman-esque character and doing his own thing because he could have gotten away with a lot more maybe he could have like, made, made it rated like r a, and it could have okay. it could have been robert pattinson you know you know like let, let him reboot the crow that to me you know, you know kind of works matt, maybe matt reeves could do the crow i i, I don't especially again with his with his Kurt Cobain version of Batman, maybe he could do the crow. Maybe that's again more that of his movie. I, again, that movie, you know, Brandon Lee. That movie to this day, I it's think great. is one of the greatest movies of all time. I it watched is, that a couple of weeks ago. It is a masterpiece. <laughs> and uh, again, you know, but 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 let's talk about that, guys. Look at that. Compare that movie. Compare the crow mm -hmm. to. Uh, Matt Reeves' Batman movie, and ask yourself, okay, <laughs> are you going to rewatch The Crow or are you yes. going to watch uh, Crow, Matt Reeves' yeah. Batman? No, you're going to no. rewatch The Crow. But if you ask yeah. a lot of today's, you know, today's dummies, they'll be like, well, uh, no, I, you know, I'll, I'll watch Matt Reeves' Batman, but not today. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, no, well, I'll get probably, to probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. Right? I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and what, with the Crows, like what, from 1993? 1993, 94, yeah. And, and it, somewhere it was, in that, and it so, still stands up. It was up. so amazing. I mean, yeah. I, you talk about a brilliant movie. That movie made me go back and hunt down any movies I could find that might have back then that might have had Brandon Lee in it. Mm. And I was able to find uh, 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 he was in he was in one goofy American movie. I think it was called Laser Mission. And then he was in um, he was um, in a Hong Kong movie. Oh, wow. And I can't remember the name of it. It was called. Oh, I remember the name of it now. It just hit me. Legacy of Rage. And I swear to God, if you guys haven't seen it, you need to seek that movie out. It is bad ass. Legacy of Rage. It was made before The Crow. It's a Hong Kong movie, okay? But Brandon Lee is just, I mean, top form. We're wow. talking top form Brandon Lee. He's getting Brandon Lee is getting bullied by these like by these like Chinese dudes because he's a white guy and He's working in like this this like diner and he's trying and re or Chinese restaurant. He gets mixed up with these with these gangsters and all this crazy stuff and you know mm -hmm. crap ensues and he basically ends up by the end of the movie whipping everybody's ass. I from, think I'm out seen that. Sunday. It is a oh it I is think a, I'm out seen that. It is a years brilliant ago. movie. Yeah. It was really it was released in the UK under the Hong Kong Legends label, so you might have yeah. seen it. I think uh, I've seen that. It's it rings a bell is, when you say oh, about the story. Oh my God! It is. We so... got another guest hopping in. So. Hey, Skywalker. Yo. What's yes. going on? Yo? What's going on, man? <laughs> Look, I am so sorry. I'm late. I had an emergency meeting. You know what I'm saying? I had some stuff that I had to take care of. That you know, no professional worries. stuff. But I'm here and I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? And I'm excited, you know. We're just having a – it's chill right now. We're going to probably start getting worked up here soon. We haven't even got into the whole, right. you know, let's fucking make the Bat Flick movie yet. Okay, we're all right. Good, there. Good, good, we, good. we were just first debunking all the Ben Affleck doesn't want to do Batman bullshit that we're trying to do out there. We, yeah, I mean, you can, you can throw in your two cents. Man, my stream, I don't care. Do whatever. Hey, yo, Say look. Something about it if you want. Um, yo, it's obviously negotiating through the media what Ben Affleck Currently. has been doing, yeah. right? Yeah, um, leverage, right? And I mean, this man literally sat there and said he just figured out how to play Batman while he was shooting the Flash movie, right? Like, if that isn't a hint at hey, I could possibly be wanting to do more, I mean, what is right? So, um I'm sure that at, you know there was a point in time where he did not you know really think it was feasible to get everything back um so that he could come back as Batman but you know um as we know times have changed and it's it is looking like he is gonna get those exact circumstances that he would want to be able to come back so yeah you know plus he's already back technically like he was in the yeah. damn last movie so what are we even like talking yeah. about justice league research but i also heard that ben affleck was really pleased with the reception he got in zack snyder's justice league yeah so, it was great um, you know and that's what you know you know what ben affleck's like you know that's the news that's the kind of thing you want to hear and you, and, know? you know ben affleck knew that Zack Snyder's Justice League was a masterpiece. That's why yeah. he agreed to come back in the first place yes. to do those to do those additional uh, photography that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that it was no Zack asked me, and I was like, yeah, for you, anything, you know, because they're, he, they're, they're good he, friends. He, I mean, he signed on originally because of Zack's vision, what Zack was doing with Batman. So that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to go down the road um, Zack Snyder was setting up for Batman, not yeah. what the studios tried to do later with Justice League. He was like, that's not the Batman I want to be. I'm out. No, yeah. The Warner yeah. Brothers, um, DCEU, and Matterburger Batman. Really, he doesn't want to be that Batman. You could have just as easily 
taken Ben Affleck, swapped Ben Affleck's Batman in Justice League was George Clooney. You could have just as easily have done that. And there would have, yeah, wouldn't have I been, agree. There wouldn't have been any difference or any jarring moments or anything. You could have literally just put digitally swapped the two actors mm-hmm. because that version of Batman that they used for Justice League was a lot like George Clooney's George portrayal Clooney's version, in Batman yeah. and Robin. He really uh, I've actually like never thought about that. That's actually a very keen observation. You know what I'm saying? Like I never um, thought about it either, but yeah, 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 right on. Right on. Because even some of the dialogue and some of the goofy crap that Ben <laughs> Affleck is forced to say in that movie, I've actually thought about. You know, something's definitely that sounds, that sounds like that sounds yeah. like something that sounds like something Clooney, that sounds like something Clooney would say. Like they, yeah. like they literally had like uh, it was almost as if Whedon was channeling Clooney when he was when he was doing his rewrites and stuff that he did for this movie because you know he was the one that came in and wrote all that bad Whedon dialogue for Ben Affleck. So we know that. I mean, I, I honestly. And and that's why I'm, I, I can I can literally I can imagine it now I can close my eyes I could literally see, you know Clooney in that scene at the beginning with the parademon, you know bringing the parademon down. But that that think about just think about how hokey that all that dialogue was. It's because he's gone, isn't it? Superman, what are we gonna do now? And, and <laughs> just like, some random about, what, about, what about the that. what about the scene where he's literally talking to Alfred over the radio and he's like. Alfred, are you seeing this out loud? When there, when there's people around, they can actually yeah. hear him and see what he's saying. Alfred, hey, I actually noticed oh, that too. Like first man. viewing, that I was yeah. like, "What the hell? Like, why the hell did he say Alfred's name in front of everybody?" Alfred, yeah. What's the point of the secret identity? He's gonna be talking about everybody he knows in real life. Yeah, it's fucking dumb, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, Dick Grayson, are you seeing this? Like, you know, yeah. you know like it was all it was all corny and and overplayed and you could you could have just as easily replaced Henry Cavill with Tyler Hoechlin from Superman and Lois. You could have just as easily replaced Superman for the way Justice uh the way uh Joss Whedon was was portraying Superman in this in this farce of a movie. You could have just as easily have done that, uh, and they might as well have. I mean, at least then you wouldn't have had Henry Cavill with a deformed, messed up face. They might as well have just swapped him out. I mean, I don't <laughs> understand why terrible. they did. All, they spent all that money on reshoots, and they lit, they they let the man's face be all deformed and messed up like that. Yeah, I mean I that that's the thing I don't understand. And, you have an actor and, like that and that's that's what you do? Like what? Yo, but look, not only just that, General Zod, right? But you also got to think about this. All those reshoots are actually what made this movie such the flop that it was, right? Because uh-huh. it oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the All budget that. so much, right? They they pretty much redid the whole damn movie in five months. And, um, you know, it's like a situation where that's part of what led to it being the big box office bomb. So Warner Brothers really just dropped the ball all the way around with that movie and its whole handling of the Snyderverse in general. Yeah. And and we were talking about before you got here about the way that the way that this movie just I, I, I was saying that if. Joss Whedon was smart. He would have told them from the beginning. He would have said, look, I don't want to come in here and just patch up somebody else's patch up somebody else's movie. That's completely ridiculous. If you guys want me to come in and direct Justice League for you, then you got to let me make my own Justice League movie. But they didn't want to give weed in that kind of time because they wanted their bonuses. And they wouldn't have got their t- Tishihara and a couple of those other would not have gotten their executive bonuses, which was all they cared about, which is why they rushed the movie out in such a shoddy condition. They knew it was going to flop. They knew it was bad. They knew it was yeah. bad when they released it. You don't hey. release a movie like that with Henry Cavill's face all deformed. And think it's going to be a successful movie, no and that way. just goes to show that they didn't care about the success or failure of the movie itself. Hey, that bag that they dropped 
on Josh Whedon's door had to be tremendous, yo. I know the, I'm brink, sure. the brink truck was by his and, house, and they just like and, unloaded, like. And part of that too was I'm sure that um, he wasn't gonna have his name attached to this thing as yeah, a, a director. A writing, he got a, he got a writing credit. That's all he got because Josh. You know what I'm saying? Like he pretty much went unscathed by mostly everybody that saw the movie because they just saw, hey, directed by Zack Snyder, and they just said, hey, this is Zack's movie. Yeah, yeah. we, we, and, you know, I lied to myself in the beginning. I was like, okay, you know, we all, I, I like, you know, yeah, I same. liked it, but then when, you know, as news and uh, took two days to me too. Out, Two swallow days. it two yeah. days we just swallow it and realize that i'm lying to myself this is a complete load of rubbish <laughs> i i had um talked with one of my um friends from work and we argued about it and i and i hated it because i knew he was probably right about some things about it but he started hearing all the stuff that came out later and it started p- paying a picture like okay this isn't a Zack snyder movie and it's starting to make sense you know like this, yeah, definitely. I can't. I just how you go from BBS to this. You gotta feel bad mostly though for Deborah Snyder because Deborah Snyder was producer on that project from start to finish. So you gotta feel bad for her because she had to stay on and continue to promote this trash while yeah. her husband was completely separate from it, and she was there trying to uh, you know <laughs> that smooth it sucked. over make it seem i mean i can't yeah. imagine how she knew it them for her she, yeah she knew exactly what they were doing to that film mm. right like i mean look i always go back to this moment but the late great john schnepp right when he said that on uh-huh. I, I think it was collider right after they started i mean it was like right after they switched and he was like yo this movie's being reshot, redone. He he was like, "Yo, you don't bring on somebody new to do the music when you already have a score completed, pretty much, right?" Like, yeah, which is exactly what happened. And you know, I lied to myself a whole bunch leading up to the release of that movie, but um, it all crumbled when I saw like Superman's face. That's when yeah. I knew that it was all real. Yeah, it was, uh, it was wounding walking out the cinema, trying to sort of fight fighting with myself and trying to admit to myself how rubbish it was. You know, it was it was just awful. And, uh, and it's a and it's a shame that they um that that not only to Zack Snyder but to their whole their whole cinematic universe just to make a couple bucks to just destroy it. And, and then afterwards, when um, Zack Snyder's Justice League was finally released out of spite tried to make it canon as well that do you know what i mean no, that yeah. was just, just like uh, that's that was actually personal there was no no doubt about that because yeah, there's no totally absolutely personal. no reason to do that other than they i mean the movie's got, got like they hate sex the, 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 the theatrical cut has probably got like in total uh the joss whedon version probably has about seven or eight uh fans yeah nobody <laughs> nobody true. With no. any with any self respect, actually, yeah. I actually did read one review. I think it was the movie critic Richard Roper who said that he liked the theatrical cut better than Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, that's, that's and I thought to myself, well, you're in the minority, buddy. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, seriously, you can't watch that movie and seriously think that. That's it's an indictment good. on your own IQ if you actually think that that's better than right. I, I I don't know how it's like it's like the people that are that keep talking about you know, you know that got on that got on my ass about when I said Morbius was better than the Batman. Well, mm. you know they're miss they're they're not understanding what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that Morbius is technically made better that morbius is a better shot film i'm saying that morbius is objectively a better movie in terms of story and entertainment value because i'm looking at all these losers that are saying oh i can't wait to get the batman on 4k but i'm not really gonna watch it for a while i'm gonna wait maybe watch it a year from now well then it's then it's not that great of a movie and it's not your favorite movie if you've got to wait a whole nother year to watch it 
So I so I'm just saying that like I I mean I I'm can in, watch BBS right now. Right now. Yeah. Right yeah. now. I will put that movie on and watch that shit right now. Yeah. Any time of the day. I do all the time. Boom. Yeah, I'm right. saying so. Zod's absolutely right. And if all y'all was buying them 4K, they wouldn't be falling all over the floor at every Target that I've been to. <laughs> I, I know, man. Yo, we, real, we said that real, earlier. All the real dude, I walked in the Target once and I seen them. Lot. For real, Yo, I it was copies of the Target Batman everywhere. On the floor. I seen them, I seen them on the floor when I walked in. I seen some 4K Batmans on the floor. I seen them. <laughs> That's not even an exaggeration. These people, they, they, it's like you guys were saying earlier about all this Batman, uh, the Batman merchandise in the bargain bin. The only thing that sold and well, it's fact, full, well, like the none only of it thing sold. that sold well for the Batman was the calzones from Little Caesars. Yeah. They were the only ones. Little that, Caesars happy. They're those like, were the yeah, ones that really one made. Those were the only ones that really made any money off of that crap. Yo, everybody was getting those things. Yo, I <laughs> was working in extra Catwoman sauce. I was working in fucking Santa Monica at that time. Yo, I, yo, literally everybody was having the bat calzone. So that's not hyperbole. You know what I'm saying? Like every, that thing was a massive success and uh, probably more successful than the actual movie. <laughs> Well, I'm yeah. sure um, their stockholders at Little Caesars are very happy. Oh, they're now. they're through the they're so through like the roof right it. now. They're through the yeah. moon. Like like <laughs> that's you, what you I was trying to say. Tell me they're, that, that they're not happy. Oh, <laughs> their shareholders were more happy about you know what I'm saying that back cows only <laughs> than the execs at Warner Brothers were about the Batman's performance. That's probably um a fact. So argue with. Math. Argue with facts. Argue let's with get money. into um. Let's talk about the bat flick movie. We don't have to talk about the plot of you know what what would have been, but maybe let's just talk about why bat flick and why it has to be made. And let's start with Skywalker since you're the last guest here. You can get in on this. Yo, um. Batfleck is imminent. Batfleck is needed. Imminent. You know what I'm imminent. saying? <laughs> like, yo. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imminent. Probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was that was such a great moment. Um <laughs> yeah. but, but look, um, no, Batfleck is needed. Um hundred percent. We've seen how great he was in BBS, obviously, right? We've seen how great he was in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Even though I was just having this conversation the other day about, um, you know, this person feeling like they liked the Batman in BBS more. Um, oh, I think it was Integrity, right? Um, that I was going oh yeah yeah back and forth with right and I how. Conversation. I think that it's important that, you know, we got a different version of Batman in the Justice League movie, right? So we have seen Batfleck interacting with other superheroes, you know, crazy supervillains and all that stuff, right? But what we have not gotten is that solo focused narrative about just Batman and that true like Batman story, right? Yeah. Which is, I think, the last piece of the puzzle to really cement Batfleck as the GOAT level Batman. Because I think that that's mostly where this argument kind of stems from is that he hasn't had that one movie for a whole lot of these naysayers to really want to put him on that level with Christian Bale, right? Or, you know, what have you. So. I think that um, him getting this solo movie is going to be what will cement him as the as the greatest Batman of all time, because he, he's already checked all the other boxes. He has the look. He has the there is the intimidation factor. He has the suaveness. Right. I mean, look, he's dating J-Lo in real life and he has a damn Batcave. So he could actually yeah. be. Batman in real life and we wouldn't even know, right? No. So um he 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 probably is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so 
um yeah he just really checks all of those of those boxes this man um fought and like defeated a god right and now we're just kind of really missing that solo story to really test him in a another way and i think um that if it is this batman v deathstroke movie i think it could possibly be something special like i am really and and anticipating that that fight could possibly be the only one that could top that warehouse scene that was in bbs so um i am i am much looking forward to this movie i think it is much well needed and i i I think that we're gonna get it, and I think it's gonna be massively successful. Um, so, uh, I think so. No, even with this recent Batman movie with you know mid, Twinkle Bats, mid, right? Mid, people, mid, people, mid, people were asking, like I literally had people asking me, like, "Yo, like, where's Ben?" You know, because everybody watched Zack Snyder's Justice League, and yeah. the general audience loved it and so um they were all wondering like yo where's the ben affleck movie and so um i think that it's going to be massive and uh yeah i'm just i'm just really looking forward to us getting it and uh it being announced and when that happens um you, you know we're gonna be um dancing on beta graves you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh it's, god yes it's, it's gonna but, be but- to, to the fight, you know, the warehouse fight in BVS, the greatest in any superhero movie ever. You know, I've, I've actually spoke to Richard Cetrone in my interview with him about this, and he agrees. Like, and he, he was him that done it. And, um, you know, it still is. And I think if, if you know, they got Richard Cetrone back to do the fight between they, Batman they and you. Deathstroke. Yeah, yeah, we've said they this in the episode. Um but, but Ben Affleck's already mentioned that he wanted to base it on the, the fight between Def, Batman and Deathstroke in the, in the Arkham games. Yeah. Um, so they, they would have it would have been it would have been something it would have been like one masterpiece of fight choreography. It probably just would have been one whole long fight scene that went on for like like Obi Wan versus uh, Anakin Skywalker and Revenge of the Sith. That's what it's going to be like. Batman and Deathstroke just going at it for like God Savage knows how long. Yeah, yo, it kind of has to be right. Yeah, because like a, full, like a fourteen minute long fight yeah. that just just goes on and on and on, smashing each yeah, other through it's... walls and all sorts. God, it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. they're both they're both double hard. But this is not the Superman world where people can uh, grab rocket ships and stuff like that. Mm-mm. It's more this... street level. And then you got Jared Leto's Joker, who's also basically just some skinny dude with a gun. Do you know what I mean? Like this is this is not it's not the same level as the Justice League. And well, I, this is the level I want to see. Batman, this is this is Batman's kingdom is Gotham City. Do you know what I mean? We've seen we've seen Batman, Ben yeah. Affleck's Batman, come kind of like into an environment that's not his environment with these meta humans, Superman, yeah, yeah. Aquaman, yeah, yeah. and and he's held his own. Yeah, but. We want to see that Batman in his environment. In his domain. No, yeah, yeah. exactly. And he's the only Batman I see of all of them who played Batman that can come, looks like he would come out of the comic and yeah. be able to walk in both of these worlds realistically. I don't yeah, see, you know, Christian Bell being able to do it. No. I don't see Patterson being able to do it, but Ben Affleck. Yeah, Patterson like your certainly DC could, comics, Batman t- couldn't could fight walk Superman. In both of these worlds, you know? Pat- Patterson versus Superman, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be a fun. That would be a funny. That'd be a funny uh, parody, you know. Uh, Pattinson, Pattinson versus Superman. It'd just be a funny parody. That, it would, it, the fight with the beef. The fight would be over in three seconds. Yeah, it would. would smash straight into the pavement. You know, like I said in the comics. Kid, go home. <laughs> you know, just go home, kid. Just... Your mom. Yeah. Your mom is. Can y'all picture Pattinson in that damn armored suit? It wouldn't fit him. Pattinson didn't even want to work. Pattinson didn't even want to work out for the movie he was in. Could you imagine him bulking up to be able to fit in one of those uh, armored suits? Give me a break. That guy, what a joke. Yeah. In fact, fact, they ought to have a multiverse uh, fight between Pattinson and Batfleck. 
Batfleck would yeah. wipe, the, oh, wipe the, would wipe the floor with. Yeah, that's I fair, think, dude. Know, he'd take out that right punch and pretty much destroy him within. I reckon. Minute. I reckon it would be a three hit combo and it'd be over. <laughs> 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 boom! 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 <laughs> Done. <laughs> Yeah, and it would be, and, and that, and, and Bad Flack would be like, get some practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah it, would, it would just be, it would just be like, you know, yeah, he'd be, he'd be, <laughs> he'd be smoked. And he wouldn't even break a sweat. Work out Dude, more. Man. He'd probably tell him to work out more. You know, so yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, maybe, I'm not wearing yeah. hooky pads. <laughs> <laughs> he drops some weights and chains and say, get pulling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, Dr. well, 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 like the scene in BVS when Bat Flack, the training montage when Bat Flack is training uh, to fight Superman. Yeah, I could never see Pattinson doing anything oh. like that. Pattinson is nah. too much of a diva to even even yeah. pretend to be doing what Ben Affleck was really doing in that movie. Bro, that shit look because you know, look, I I've been in the army. I played sports my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I've like been at the peak of physical fitness. You know what I'm saying? So like that shit inspired me. You sit there and you see that like that was real, yo. That was yeah. like Fire. real. Weight. That was like something was, out of uh, that was like right out of like the Rocky Four montage where yeah, like, yeah, that's just the load is traded yeah. for Drago. That's what it felt like <laughs> yeah, to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, saying, yeah, see, like him yes. sitting there pulling that damn them weight. I was like, yo, man, that's like real work. Getting them damn pull ups in real with the weight work. hanging. That was real work. Was me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So like that wasn't no CGI, man. That he's, shit wasn't no CGI. He's not sitting in the back cave listening to um, Nirvana, you know, fucking right. brooding yeah. about yeah, like, Alfred telling you know, him. You're what, hearing what about to do you're, you're just hearing with you know, his fucking eye makeup on. Oh, yeah, with, <laughs> with, with, yeah, doesn't even take eye, it off. With his <laughs> eyeliner and then, his eyeliner, and then he farts and he's upset because he has to get up, and it's just, it's just so. <laughs> I mean. Give us give the, the real Batman. Give the man a give the man yeah. a Snickers and give us the real Batman. <laughs> uh, I've actually got the make the Batfleck campaign hoodie on now. Um, I'm good friends with Gary McGill. Um, he's got a friend that does it with him, but he likes to remain anonymous. The the actual make the Batfleck campaign. Oh, yes. Wow. And uh, all the proceeds go to AFSP, and they've started splitting it up now to AFSP. Feed America and Ben Affleck's Congo Initiative. Um, and I'm really good friends. I speak to him on a daily basis. He's coming on my channel next weekend, I think, we, whenever we get the time zones worked out. Um, because we always, you know, either end both uh, starts been messing up. But um, he's very, the, 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 the campaign itself, he's done so well and raised, he's raised thousands uh, for charity so far. Wow. And, um, cool. Yeah, it's it's great, and I'm, we're getting him on my channel to talk about all that, you know, very soon. But um, yeah, he's a great guy as well. Um, he's um, you know they've re really put hard work and effort into it. Multiple things they've done. They they had the billboard truck light up truck outside the Warner Brothers studios, and uh, the the um, NYPD was called. And then David says, left told the police to go away. It's fine. They're not doing anything wrong. I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, in fact, cool. it went all the way to the top. Got noticed. You know, and Zesler said that there's no, they're not doing any harm. So, uh, you know, it's just a billboard truck with asking for something, you know. And uh, But they've done so much That's stuff. That's a good sign. We? That's a good sign right there. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, well Zaslav probably likes Ben Affleck best as Batman too. And he's already made that. Batman. He's already made that obvious. He, he seems like a smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm he's... gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say this right now. Yeah. If, definitely. If the bat. If the Batman had it come out prior to the merger, there's a good chance that we might not have seen that movie. And I'll go yeah. on record oh, as I saying think it that. Would... Because I think that movie is so mid and so trash that Zaslav probably would have been like, where's Ben Affleck? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, I don't think, yeah. again, I don't think that this movie, this movie got made and released under negative pretenses anyway to try and get people's 
minds off the Snyderverse to try and veer away from the Snyderverse. When you make a movie in bad faith, and I think this is the reason why, you know, The Flash is going through all this trouble. Because when you make a movie in bad faith, Mm -hmm. and you're basically trying to hurt the fan base that is paying all this money to see your movies and is buying all the merchandise, you're hurting your consumer base. You don't deserve to make billions of dollars. You don't deserve to be successful. You deserve to have flop after flop after flop. And This is why uh, the Batman didn't make a billion. This is why you're, you know, Zaslav is probably like, the, and remember, it was the old regime that announced the sequel to the Batman. It wasn't the new regime because they don't have a DC head yet. They never came out and announced a sequel to that movie. I think that it's debatable that that'll happen. I think Matt hey. might, might get some HBO Max TV shows, but I, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and bet money that that movie, that that mid Batman movie is actually going to get a theatrical sequel because I don't think it's going to, to tell you the truth. That's a damn good point. They were trying Maybe. to, they I were don't trying care to rush way. out. They were trying to rush out everything. Remember when they put that big promo out with all their movies? Like what? Yeah, yeah all their Weeks movies before the end, the murder heroes, right? happened. It was the year of heroes, right? Yeah. They were like just trying, trying. And Zasov's like, I don't give a fuck what you all did. It ain't happening. I and I honestly it think that Zaslav might have looked at that movie and said, no, no, it probably would not have come out. I just don't think that it, I think that the, it, that movie came out by the skin of its teeth because the merger was still going on at the time that the the movie came out so Mm -hmm. yeah it just got to sneak through a little right Mm -hmm. Right. yo like it zod's absolutely right um you know they would have kind of been in the same situation that they are now with the flash right but i think that that would have had a higher likelihood of just getting like a hbo max release or something because you have an active Mm -hmm. Batman that you can bring in, right? Like there was an alternative. Like matter of factly, Ben Affleck's movie was supposed to be called The Batman. Mm-hmm. This exactly. Movie, so Matt Reeves, that's actually Matt what it Reeves, says. Matt Reeves, even, Matt Reeves even stole the title, the Ben Affleck mm-hmm. film, right? So, yeah. so, so, um, yeah, he absolutely did, right? And they pushed him out, but at the end of the day. I think that, you know, we all got a good look at Robert Pattinson's Batman. And I think a lot of us um, left still wanting more Ben Affleck. And I definitely am on that same page. Like, I think it's doubtful that the sequel might get made. First of all, they even said from the jump that it was going to be like within the next five years. Right. So, you know, like, yeah, like who the hell says within the next five years? Like, so. Um, you got something yeah. hot. You want to get the next version right out. Boom. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, I think it might be now, a little bit. Of, uh, uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna get the Batfleck movie, and everybody is gonna forget about this Pattinson crap because once that Affleck movie comes out and it is an absolute masterpiece, uh, you, we're gonna we're, we're looking at the definitive Batman. Come on. I mean, yeah. Robert Pattinson is 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 such a he's such a a, a wimpy, mediocre <laughs> adaptation of Batman. He doesn't even look like Batman. No, What's and ev- ev- every every single poll across the internet, and there's been some funny ones as well because it's been people that are fans of the was pretend fans of the Pattinson thing into you know. Um, and they've met all across the board. Ben Affleck's winning the best Batman polls. I so, would rather it's... watch a George Clooney led Batman movie, another yeah. George Clooney led Batman movie, <laughs> than another Pattinson movie. I want, I want yeah. them to, I want them to bring. Hey. That's what they want to do. I want them to bring Clooney back. But bring the Pattinson Clooney fans right are now. starting these polls, and then Ben Affleck's winning, and they're not liking it. They're going, "Oh, this hasn't gone the way I, <laughs> I meant it well, to." Happen. How, how are you going to a Batman where? You can't shoot him from certain angles because he looks too wimpy. 
Mm. Yeah, and that's right. I, yeah, that you see how I mean, you like see what? How, you saw how thin his legs were. His legs were almost like chicken wire when he yeah. was walking. When but, they showed the when the camera panned down underneath uh-huh. his yeah. cape and showed his legs in that upside down scene when he's walking towards the penguin's car that's exploding. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, yeah. You see how skinny he was. That's yeah. that's unacceptable for Batman. Man. I could de- I could definitely kick Patterson's ass. <laughs> everybody, everybody could. I think everybody on this panel. Can. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like I'd be like oh oh your vengeance okay bow <laughs> boom <laughs> Batman out <laughs> I mean, yeah Batman, Batman out <laughs> that's the one. I mean, I, mean, I mean I mean Skywalker wouldn't even break a sweat fight. Man. Oh no. <laughs> Man, Skywalker no. would be like, no. Skywalker would be like, now I feel like going to eat some donuts. I just kicked your bad ass. There's nothing, there's nothing, bro. Like he don't even know martial arts in, no. in his version. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he ain't even just, like, did he even he, train? Did he even do anything? No, you know, like, there's no. no like, how did he become Batman? He just and everybody's decided like, oh, he's gonna make a bat oh, but this is, but this is year, this is year two Batman, year three. Well, if this is year two Batman, then he would have cha- he would have trained with the League of Assassins by now, and he would already He'd be, be a, 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 mar- a martial artist. He's mm-hmm. this this Batman is no martial artist. This Batman can barely fight. He just knows how to mm-hmm. punch. One two punch like the buttons, like me and Sil were talking about, like the yeah, like that's how I play video boom, games. Boom. <laughs> smash, yeah, smash, 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 but, smash. Button mashing. That's what Pattinson's <laughs> technique is. I mean, <laughs> those fights were like the choreographed fights were boring because he didn't he yeah, didn't bring up was. into the table. The man. only reason nah, any of it a... looked, the only reason any of it looked cool was because it had graphic novel like cinematography. Cinematography. Yeah, yeah. It was shot well. Oh. There was a couple of bits on them like. Uh, but uh, what should we call him? When he was fighting the Riddler's men and grabbing the guns off of them, there's a couple of scenes there that was okay-ish. Yeah, I'll admit that, yeah. Nothing, to, nothing special. Nothing compared to the warehouse fight scene, you know. Nothing. Uh, Not nothing, at all. You know, right? that's Not even thing. close. And if they, if they <laughs> can't even come close to that or equaling that or maybe... Not, even, fight, not they, even close to that. They They failed. They failed. Definitely, because even people that don't like Batman vs Superman praise the warehouse fight scene. That shows you how good it is. The haters actually acknowledge that fight scene. So what first? Look, look, not only that though, right? But that movie really was set out to make people forget about Ben Affleck's Batman, and it failed. So um, it just failed on, on like multiple levels. Absolutely. I would argue it it drove the demand up higher. So, yeah, it actually it helped. It actually helped our case when they put they put out this mid Batman movie. This scrawny, wimpy Pattinson actually helped our case for uh, the Batfleck movie that we have to have because there's no way. And again, this is where they make their made their mistake. You don't put out Zack Snyder's Justice League and show. Ben Affleck in top tier form as Batman taking on aliens, okay, yeah. and then to toe. and then bring out Robert Pattinson and try to make a make a movie about a scrawny Kurt Cobain street brawler Batman and expect beating up teenagers, <laughs> yeah, to, and expect people to be excited about. I mean, come on! This is what I, I don't understand. I'm like, I'm like, and 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 that's why I said, like I said earlier, I mean it 100. I will take, I will take Batman and Robin any day of the week over uh, this Matt Reeves Batman movie because at least Batman and Robin doesn't shy away from what it is. Batman and Robin it is a parody, yeah. and it, it it's meant to be comedic it's meant to be funny and george clooney knocks it out of the park pattinson mm. not so much look i want to know why savage bad point now he was beating up teenagers i never even realized <laughs> it was they were kids in the train station they, they were like, like uh maybe some of them were 20 21 you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but then look but then look right like the Riddler character, he's probably like he he looked younger. Yeah. And then, like, how many of those people that was in the Riddler masks 
were yeah, teenagers. Yeah, they, 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 they had to be teenagers. Yeah, they had to be teenagers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, the internet, well I mean, the, the Riddler. Like the well, come on, guys. Guys. Kids. Guys, the movie sucks. The Riddler was a YouTuber. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yo. Yo. I mean yo. Hey, Zack Snyder's Riddler was going to figure out the anti life. Equation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This Riddler is an instant. This guy was telling people to like and subscribe, <laughs> right? This guy yeah. was like and subscribe. Zack Snyder's Riddler was anti life equation. What, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think there's a, a genius level difference. Do we see the problem there? here? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah, Robert Pattinson's Batman's kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember that episode of um, Seinfeld where. Um, Kramer was in the karate cast with the kids kicking their ass and all that. That's Patterson Batman. So yeah. Like, come on, man. Put him up yeah, some, some, some real yeah, lynch man terrible. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like the general audience that have seen Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know, we've kind of seen it before in the Justice League, but the scene with Lex Luthor and Deathstroke at the end, um, mm -hmm. you know, leaving it open for that Batfleck movie. Um, you know, people that don't even know anything about all this stuff that we know behind the scenes and all that. They've seen that, right, yeah, and that's gone in. All right, well, what's happening next? You know, like when they people get their Marvel, what's the, the Marvel yeah. films, you get the next part of the stories in the next one. Spider-Man leads on a Doctor Strange or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, they want to say, well, what's happening next? We want to see that. You know, it, that's just not, that's just your average cinema goer, you know, or f viewer, rather. Um, well, yeah. the, the the cliffhanger of the movie with um, Dark Side saying, you know, ready to Armada, you know, we'll do it the old way. Yeah, we're super That's like, that, oh, yeah. shit, well, I want to see that. Yeah, like, everyone yo, wants to see that. Like, yo, Dark Side used to pull up Dolo and jump off the ship by his yeah. lonesome. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He said, I'm about to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 yo, they think we playing. I'm about to come take this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I need that it, a anti life is found this side, and we will stop at nothing to possess it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I mean, I love that movie. Man. I somewhat I mean, mentioned. Yeah. I don't know if there's any truth to it. It was just what some. I just briefly read it quickly. It was um, someone was saying the anti life equation is under the lake Bruce Wayne's. Wayne Manor. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Don't know where that came from, but wow. it's, I just you know, I just heard that. I was thinking, what? I don't know where they've got that one from, but it sounds interesting. It is here on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh. I don't even want to get into the whole beta argument. Well, how did they forget? You know where the anti-life equation was. Wait. Oh, yeah. Can I just dispel this real quick, yo? Real quick. Yes, yes, you can. Okay, look, guys. All right, step into Professor Skywalker's class. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, look. Listen, this dude, Darkseid, was near death, okay? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Now, um, there's like trillions and trillions of planets out there, the people. Not in only the that, multiverse as well. When Darkseid got back to Apocalypse, he had to fight a war for his throne, which is when the whole Steppenwolf thing happened, and we were supposed to get more of that. You know what I'm saying? So he had to fight a war. So he literally had to fight a war. The mother boxes went to sleep and were gone, and it's you know, and it's an ocean of stars out there. We don't know how much time passed before he was even in a situation where he was even in charge and, you know, had the faculties to be able to go and look for it. So, look, just it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Just relax. If you got you see, y'all didn't even learn. Y'all jumped the gun on BBS with certain stuff and try to claim certain stuff with plot holes. Right. Yeah. Just for you to get an answer. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, have that same courtesy here. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And wait, if there are unanswered questions, just assume you'll be getting an answer. Zack is very, yeah, very. Yeah, he always ridiculous. does. It yeah, will definitely. be addressed, I am sure, one way yeah. or another. I mean, Dark Side only came out in a movie what two times? 
short. He's yeah. not even supposed to be a major character in the film, and they want all these answers. And hey, man, let it play out. Shit. Yeah, but the whole you know uh, Superman like saying, "Yeah, come on, you know, we're <laughs> you know we're ready for you now." The Kryptonian's back, and Dark Side. Well, I ain't having him <laughs> tell me the Kryptonian's back. Do you know what I mean? He's gonna go over, come over here, and smash us up. Um, you know, the Dark Side. Yeah. War, everyone wants to see it. Come on, it's it's epic. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and the boom tubes was only able to open like that here because the mother boxes was here. Yeah. Yo, yeah, correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the only reason why they was even able to create the boom tubes when they separated the mother boxes. That's why the boom tube closed. That's why he said we will use the old ways. We're pulling using up the ships. Yeah, we're using pulling the, up. Using yeah, Armada. Yeah. Invasion. Invasion. Yeah. You know, with the you can see the ships in the you know the nightmare timeline, can't you? Well, oh yeah, the, the whole yeah. planet's toasted by the, that scene. So yeah, we're going to see how all that unfolds, and that's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how they're going to play this one out. Whether they're going to do the uh, Justice League Two is this kind of dark side invasion. And it ends like uh, on a cliffhanger of they've lost, you know, like Rocky won when he loses. Mm -hmm. and, th and then Justice League 3 is the nightmare timeline. Or I don't know whether they're going to have that all in Justice League 2 or whether they're going to split that up. Well, or... at this point, it, it, it's anybody's guess because those yeah. old storyboards, you know, that's not happening now. Yeah. There's, and there's also exactly a possibility that they could make Justice League 2 and 3 and the Nightmare timeline as a separate thing in between. Like a, a, a long-running series. You never, you don't know. Oh, like an HBO Max. Oh, man, they made like an HBO, HBO Max, Max Nightmare. Night, Nightmare timeline series. <laughs> yeah. 10 episodes, 10 hours of uh, Justice League in between Justice League 2 and 3. Oh, man. I, I think mean, you'd be getting some new HBO subscribers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and you know that that, that would, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be great. But um, you know, I, I think the Justice League two and three, and the Batfleck movie. I know we, it's just a funny thing that's been said by you know the the Snyder fans and that over the years about you know. DC movies and old ones, but I really do think all of these will hit the billion mark without no problem. At this point, yeah. Just because of the demand, the amount of people that are willing to, yeah, the, the, the demand to go is, out of their being, way to pay being for ignored it. Ignored by the vocal minority. Yeah, you know? the demand is we're all willing to pay for this. Like, go and see it three or four times, buy three copies of the Blu ray, you know, the normal one, the steel book. And then a special edition steel book. Do you and know what I mean? That's, and then get it out. And then get, and then it, get it on Am Amazon Prime. League. Yeah, and and you know and all that. You know, and I'll get it on my phone just for the fucking hell of it. <laughs> I mean, doing doing all bringing it back is just printing money for a WBD. And they yeah. gotta see it. They gotta yeah. see it at this point. Yeah, They'll they be must do. Our they man, do. sorry Danzig, but you know. People want to see, you know, the Trinity. Yeah, that's that's their top draw. You know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. That's that's what people know DC for. You don't. Yeah, am I interested in Supergirl? Yeah, I'm interested. Am I interested in Batgirl? Yeah, I'm interested. Do I want to see Batman, Superman, and, and Wonder Woman? Hell yeah, that's Whoa. I want to see that. And I Whoa, think the general yeah. audience is like that too. You know, that's what they want to see. Hundred percent. And, no, it's not uh, you know, getting sense. back to um, Batflick, how awesome would it be to see him just have his movie and not have the co-star share with a group and we just get to see Batflick, you know, for whatever, two hours yeah, and 20 minutes fantastic. And, and his world and what he deals with, you know, not, yeah, exactly. you know, having to deal with gods and, you know, aliens, but just, you know, I want to see that, man. Same. Yeah. Street level, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah, that, the big, um, and it cuts oh, the budget yeah. down so much as well, because oh. you haven't got to do these big, 
dramatic for Superman flying in the sky of things and all that. It can all be stuntmen and explosions and, yeah, the, bat and the Batmobile just driving down the road. Hasn't got anything be anything too fancy. You know what I mean? They could make it on, you know, don't ha wouldn't have to be a massive budget. So, you know, uh, that, that, that's another, another bonus. Um, you know, more uh, on the storytelling side of it. And action look, scenes. Look. If they gave it near what they gave the Batman, just gave it like, you know, one to two hundred million dollars, right? I, oh, I, I think it would be super crazy. But yeah. I think that it'll bring massive amounts of money back, yo. Look, you can't yeah. discount how big Zack Snyder's Justice League is internationally as well. This movie did gangbusters. It's going to make money around the world, yo. And, you know, even domestically here in the States, I think it'll also be massive because the demand is that much higher. Now you have the general audience that is interested in this story mm -hmm. and seeing where it goes. Right. So it's perfect. For it's not them. A, a niche little group. You know, it's no the general audience it, is ready for it now. Yeah, Definitely. because we released the Snyder Cut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we Davis. made history. We made history. What did you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you train? On a farm? <laughs> 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 yeah, that was Yo. That's like one of the coldest lines, cause I really feel that though, like, bro, like, but, but that's how we should feel as a, a fandom. Like, where the hell have these people trained? Like, what did they do? You know what I'm saying? What battles have they won? Right? What causes are they trying to put support in? Really trying to advance? Really, that's really, positive, Skywalker. The know? answer to that question is that they're all just bandwagon fans. That's the answer to the question because. Yeah. If you think about it, they jump on every new movie that comes out, like Locust, and they all jump in front of it to defend it. They did the same thing. They did the same thing with The Suicide Squad, and then that movie came out, and then Crickets. They did that with, with the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, fought tooth and nail, talked about how great that movie was. Now, that was Crickets. Crickets. It's, it's, just, it's just like it's, it's, a, it's a psychological bandwagonism where they're essentially <laughs> they don't have nothing they don't stand for anything and this is why our fandom is so strong because we've been single-minded focused this entire time we want zach's vision to continue that's not up for debate we're not we're mm -hmm. not and we'll stop at nothing you. less we're not we'll negotiating with the yeah. bandwagon <laughs> Beta terrorists were not negotiating with them. We never don't compromise, care. not it's even not in about, the face of Armageddon. Not even in the face of Armageddon. Zack Snyder posted that himself. Exactly. And we so all know what that means. We should all <laughs> understand that that's what this is. They're bandwagoners. They jump on every single movie yeah. that's not a Zack Snyder movie and act like it's going to be the greatest movie in the world. And then when it isn't, they don't have nothing to say. So uh, this, that, 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 like you said about the Suicide Squad and the Batman, they did that. It's, it's, they it's did got, that. It's they got so quiet. I'm not they seeing any posts. Like I'm not seeing any posts now. All this, ah, it was wonderful. Nothing now. It's almost like this. Just that never happened. These same people. That was just shilled, like a distant memory. They, they shilled <laughs> these same people. Guys, remember this. These same people shilled and 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 defended wonder woman 84 they did the yeah. same thing for birds of prey for every movie that's come out since they got rid of Zack snyder and none of them none of those movies lived up to the hype none of them nah, the only close oh the only one that made any kind of money was aquaman but that was right after justice league came out and it was still kind of like riding that wave of like positive Positive, it got a bill. What a lot of people don't understand is that it got a billion dollars because of the goodwill that Jason Momoa gained from the audience by constantly hyping up the Snyder Cut. 
Hmm. Every single press release that Jason Momoa did for Aquaman, he mentioned Zack Snyder at one point or another. In fact, yeah, yeah. he even got into an argument with one of these Collider idiots over visual effects for the Snyder Cut. And I love that because I would show that yeah. clip to all these idiots and they would say, and they would still they would still try to use the visual effects argument when Jason Momoa himself said, hmm. what, what, you don't think that the effects are done? I mean, what, what are you talking about? Like Momoa himself debunked the collider idiot when he said, well, the visual effects aren't done. Uh, what do you, <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about, Jason? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that Zach had a cut that had finished the FX, probably that did. 214 cut. Did, you know what did. I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think so. Hey, do with that what you will. Yeah. And a lot of people too thought Aquaman was um, a direct continuation of being in the Snyderverse. Well, so well, that's because they, they Jason went. Momoa. That's because Jason Momoa on every press release would start off every sentence with. In Zach's cut, yeah, okay, that's yeah. how he would. That's how he would start every sentence where they would ask him where uh, Aquaman fits in. Yeah, uh, for, for, for for me, yeah, Aquaman right. was all right, but uh, it's the Zach's trilogy, Wonder Woman, and then Aquaman behind that, and then I don't give a shit about the rest. Uh, this, oh, sorry, the old Suicide Squad, even though it's cut to shit, I, I do like that as well. I put that behind Aquaman. But the I Shazam, for, Birds I of Prey. Forgot, I completely forgot about that movie, to tell you the truth. I just want the, the air cut to come the out. Air cut, I've, yeah, I've put, yeah, we need I've to put, put it to rest. Version, I've put yeah. that movie so far out of my mind, I don't even count it anymore. I just wish that no. they would just put the air cut out. Well, they and will. They way, will. That's, this way we have, you know, this way we're good. You again, know, it's free money. Now. Yeah, it's, it's free money. Do you know what I mean? But you know that's, that's why I say knows. this this Tessa digital release, that. this digital release of the Snyder Cut is the first, the first domino. You put that up, then you put out, then you do the same thing with the air cut. You drop the air cut digitally yeah. shortly after, and then that's that that's when you make the announcement of Battle Steel Two, and you basically uh, canonize the fact. Yes. The Snyderverse is back. Period. Yeah. Snyderverse wouldn't is it be, Wouldn't it be so cool when we finally get to see the mother boxes and you know the air cut? Like, you know, how is it supposed to be and how it was all supposed to connect? I mean, that's gonna be fantastic. Steppenwolf is in yes. the no yeah. is in the yeah. novel, is in the air cut novel. Yes. The the Suicide Squad novelization. That's how you know that air was his cut is tied directly into what Snyder was doing. It was leading into the Justice League. Yeah. yeah. Max Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, I just I just can't wait for all this to just start rolling out. And again, you know, like this rewatch rally thing, you know, people don't realize that, that it's priceless to me. That Zach trilogy, I must watch that at least once a month. Like more. Do you know what I mean? But especially Batman vs. Superman for some reason. That's my That's favorite. My favorite and I always whack that on. Just when I'm in a certain kind of mood, I'm like, do you know what? I'm going to chill out, maybe yeah. have a drink. Yeah. Whack it's Batman like, vs. Like Superman. It's like this. Do you want to watch? <laughs> do you want to watch? Do you want to watch Pornhub or Batman vs. Superman? But Batman vs. Superman, Superman extended <laughs> edition. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just uh, it's the stuff of legend for me. You know, my uh, my favorite Batman comic was The Dark Knight Returns. Same since yeah, since I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. When, I mean, that was just like, and then when you saw BVS, you were like, "This is that Batman. Yeah. This is Frank Miller's Batman." This yeah. is, I've oh, been this all, is arguing great, with my man. friends about you know who would win Batman versus Superman, trying to explain to them about this comic, Dark Knight Returns, and then now and then it came out on screen. I didn't have to say anything anymore. You know, they was all before it came out. They was all going, "Ah, Batman's going to get his ass kicked." I'm like, I'm telling you, just you read. Not much it's not Batman. what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> tricky. I love that Zach um, didn't mince his words when he was like, "Yo, there will be a definitive winner at the end of yeah. this movie." 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like he actually went through and there was a clear winner. And yeah, there was a clear winner. Yeah, um, I just I was just really happy that it was Batman because that yeah. shit was awesome. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That I was, was awesome. just well, my whole To make the whole story work, it had to be Batman. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we all know Superman held back. If Superman wanted to, he could, but that's not in Superman's nature or character to be that way. Yeah, there's a lot from the book here's the that thing, says that. Here's the thing that I noticed. I think he was going to try. I think when he balled up his fist, when he, like, punched that part of his mask off, when he got hit with that second kind of kryptonite kind of grenade, I think that's when he was really going to do it. Like, because he oh, was well, like, yeah, Yo, yeah. At that point, like, yeah. Man, I've tried. I was trying to reason with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, all this. And it's like a ticking time clock. I think when he balled his fist up and he had that look, he's like, yo, like, I'm about to really just end this dude. But luckily, Bruce, you know what I'm saying, hit him with that second canister, and it was 99. Well, it was the yeah. first time um, Superman felt fair and was, you know, like, on the robes, you know, like, Wow, I am, you know, like he was not super strength because of the kryptonite, and he, it went from him like thinking he had the edge, like shit, I could be dying tonight. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that that you know the, that changed everything at that moment once he started hitting him with kryptonite and he started getting weak because he, he saw it in you know in Batman's eyes, he was out to kill him, man. So yeah. it came up, it came up, you know, fight for your life type of situation. Uh, and it's funny as well because. When it first came out, people were saying, oh, how comes um, Superman couldn't see through the, the the grenades, you know, when he first tricks Superman on the top of that building? And then if you go back and look, what, uh, one of the cartridges, it's got lead written on it. <laughs> Zack Snyder even thought of that. Do you know what I mean? Like people are going, ah, leave Superman would have seen through that smoke. That's stupid. And then you go back and see it. It's got lead written on the cartridge. <laughs> That's why he couldn't see it. <laughs> Zack yeah. covers his base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so cool. Just, just, just you know, like the per periodic table of lead. I can't think, remember what it is now, but yeah, well, you know, lead leads to like more, that. More morons. Uh, PB. 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 That's it. Yeah. Written on the cartridge. So like. <laughs> hey, the yeah. Slade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so, so many things like that. I love, I love telling people when they tell me that. Oh, 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 right. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> all right, guys. I guess we'll be wrapping it up here soon. So yeah. I think we're all in um, agreement. Fucking, we went Ben Affleck bat, bat, <laughs> back as Batman. It's obvious. It's the obvious choice. It's what the world needs. Is what we need. Yeah. Um. So we will go around. Um. Savage Bat. Any last words? I uh, just want to say a massive shout out to Gary McGill at the Make the Bat Fleck movie campaign, and uh, I'll be having them on my channel soon. So you'll hear their sort of story and you know what's been going on with them from the horse's mouth very soon. And uh, yeah, just a massive shout out to them, really. And thank you for having me on, Necron. Oh, and it's, thanks it's for lovely to be with the guys again. This is this four panel. I think I'm gonna have to do this a little bit more on my channel. It's a bit more, you know, you, you can, you know, it's, it's, it's great stuff. Yeah, it's great, great, great awesome. to be here. Um, I'm glad you're here. Skywalker, what do you have to say? Mike. You're on mute. My bad, y'all. You know, no I'm trying to, I ain't trying to echo. You know what I'm saying? But look, um, look. One, I got a couple live streams coming up. You know what I'm saying? I will be going live again this weekend. Um, I am locking down a few OG talks for y'all. You know, Ooh. one of them is from a different time zone, so we're trying to work that out now. But be on the lookout for that. Um, you know, this whole. That flag thing is imminent. You know what I'm saying? You guys might as well just get used to it. Um, and Necron. Necron, I have to be honest. I thought about you the other night, yo. Oh. I was watching uh, the Stranger Things finale, and I was oh. like, yo, this is like <laughs> the most metal shit I've seen in a long time. And like, I was like, yo, Necron's going to love this shit. And I just, I just I had love to that. That was you know me basically in the 80s. 
<laughs> that was fucking great, man. This is music. <laughs> hey, but look, um, it's always a pleasure to rock out with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And thanks for having me on. Sorry that I was late. You know what I'm saying? No but, worries. Uh, Glad you made it, man. All right, General Zod. Well, first of all, shout out to you, Necron. Thank you so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure to be here with all of you gentlemen. You know, I rock out with Savage Bad and Skywalker the Jedi all the time. This is this is becoming, you know, a a regular recurring event. And I have to say I couldn't be happier about it. I think this is wonderful. I think the the network that we've that we've created here on our channels is one of the greatest things uh, that we could do because we are a we are a community of like-minded individuals who all want the same thing and never waver from what we what we've been fighting for all this time, and that's beautiful. So I I've enjoyed this. This has been great, and I'm looking forward to us uh, doing a lot more collaborations in the future. You guys, you guys are wonderful, fantastic stuff. Likewise to all you guys. Thanks for showing up on my little channel here. I do appreciate it, man. And I love mm -hmm. talking Snyderverse with all you guys man and on that note we are done so laters everyone metal Bat batman out <laughs>